the first Wily stage, you'll find these platforms that roll across a rail and spin out when it rolls across the broken part of the pipe. So obviously, you want to stand on it only when it's upright. But when you're on the platform, you trigger the lights to turn off so you can't see what's around you. You have to jump to get the lights back on. This part is no big deal, but there'll be a more challenging one later on. You'll battle these birds dropping eggs and fan fucks that suck and blow you. But the lights are out every time your feet are on the ground. So jump frequently and remember it's better to let this guy blow you than suck you. That's what she said. After you take out the second fan, ride the rush jet up here to get an extra life. Here's where the platforming in the dark becomes more challenging. You'll go over a pit, so whatever you do, don't fall. Try to jump as much as you can to keep the lights on, but follow the platform that's under you in case it changes direction. Jump from the stationary platform here to this one, then when the platform ahead gets to about here, jump across and then you're good. Just kill the gunner ahead and don't let the platform run across the broken part of the pipe up top while you're still on it. You climb the ladder and have to deal with another batch of these things, this time above spikes. Wait here for the platform to get through the broken pipe section and then use it to get up here to the next ladder. To get the E-Tank up here, use the rush jet, bring yourself off the ground a little bit, and carefully jump up and slide under. Next up is a mini boss battle with bass. Try saying that five times fast. He just jumps around and fires a laser along with a large sphere shot, but the floor structure can make your positioning a little awkward. Try to keep off level with him and keep your distance, he'll just fire like a madman. Use the noise crush on him, charging the shard up is up to you, but it may throw off your timing. After you win, he promises to return and you're on your way to the main boss, but first there's a few nests of bed bugs, which as long as you let the nest live, can be a great source for items, just keep shooting them down. The boss right up ahead is a reinforced Gutsman. He'll cause rocks to fall from the ceiling and push a huge freaking boulder at you, which isn't easy to jump over. Impossible to avoid is the grip he'll put on you before tossing you into the ceiling, which does some pretty good damage to you. Use the slash claw at his head as many times as you can to prevent yourself from having to use more than one E-Tank, because you might need it. By the way, after you destroy him, you won't just automatically go on to the next stage. You can make stops at the shop to replenish your goods, so keep that in mind if you want tanks or lives or anything. But if you go back to a Robot Master stage, the next time you select Wily, you'll be back at the first stage. So the first chunk of the second stage is pretty simple at first. Some Sniper Joes, these guys, pretty basic shit. Then suddenly you end up in the middle of another battle with base. This time he fuses with treble and starts flying around firing a rocket punch at you. So you're gonna fight fire with fire and use your rocket punch with your super adapter. He'll hover for a bit before sending his rocket punch at you. Try to fly away from it and charge up your rocket punch to give him a shot right after. Try to stay away from him completely when he's got the rocket pack going and is firing his lasers. You may need an E-Tank for this cause base is really nimble here. If you have a hard time getting away from him because you can't slide, then use the noise crush instead. Bouncing it off the left side wall will charge it up, it won't work on the right side. After dealing enough damage, base concedes and takes off. While bouncing from spring to spring here, use the junk shield to keep these guys off your ass, and all you have to worry about is bouncing into the right direction. Oh, this fucking shit. Now, you could fart around here all day waiting for the next shot to die down and time your movements perfectly, or you could just say fuck that and count on the assistance of the jetpack. You may take some damage along the way here, as there are a lot of these flames, but there is a health capsule near the end on the right side. The ladder to escape is on the left. Then there's another small section with these flame shots again, this time above a floor of spikes. Kill the gunner first, then throw the jetpack on, and when the flame dies off, move to this one, and then up here to get to the ladder when the flame clears up. The boss is this big ass turtle. It'll fire out a stream of flames a couple times. They can do some damage, so be sure to jump over them. Then it'll hide in its shell and shift back and forth a few times, slide underneath, and then quickly back. Then it takes off and sends its children after you. You can't hit him with your regular plasma cannon, not counting the Mega Buster, so use the junk shield and let them walk right into death. They can also leave behind items so you can recharge your life or weapon energy. When the turtle is shooting its fireballs or in between these little shifts when its head is out, that's when you want to attack its head. I use the normal arm cannon and charge up the Mega Buster when it's doing its stupid air floating attack. You'll take him down and now it's on to stage 3. Toward the beginning, you'll have to deal with this somewhat invisible floor again. Move slowly so you can see where the floor ends and kill everything that moves. 
Use the danger wrap on this douche to get an easy extra life. Now, here's where the jetpack or the rush jet really come in handy. All these spiked floor pits with conveyor belts and enemies in between. Death waiting to happen without the assistance of a little bit of gravity defiance. Fly and shoot, and you'll be across in no time. These bombs are timed, but they also scroll horizontally very slowly. Get up here and slide under to get onto this bomb. Then hop across to the next two, then back down to the one below, and then leap across to the floor over the spikes. Now at this point, you can go two different ways. You can go down this way underwater, avoid all the spikes on either side of you, and grab the extra life up here. Then you've got to be careful about how you jump over these spikes. Too high or too low, and you're dead. You can always take the jet across too, you know. Then you'll battle the same crab bastard from earlier. Then the spiked ceiling opens up and you'll float up. Stay kinda toward the middle at first, shifting between the spikes, and then make sure you get your ass to the right after that or you'll be trapped in there. Then take the top route, slide under, and get an E-tank, and you'll arrive at the boss. Or if you take the other route by taking the jet up this way into this little gap up here, it's much quicker, much easier, and instead of just getting a 1-up and an E-tank, you'll get an E-tank, an S-tank, and a W-tank. You'll just have to get across this long ass run of appearing blocks, but I advise you to take the rush jet across. I recommend this route much more. The boss is this large machine that chases you down. It'll fire off missiles which you can stand on, and he has a freaking laser beam attached to his head. Head as far to the right side as possible when he does this. And then he'll fire off a couple cannonballs, run in between those. To defeat him, equip the slash claw, hop onto the missiles, and jump towards his head, slashing at his forehead where the laser points out of. It'll do decent damage, but as long as you keep the routine going, you should be able to avoid the attacks with minimal damage and eventually take him out. Before you go to the fourth Wily stage, go to the store and stock up on E-tanks, S-tanks, M-tanks, and extra lives. You're gonna need them. So now we're at the fourth and final Wily stage. And in fine Mega Man tradition, we will be battling all eight Robot Masters again. But first, slip into these nooks and grab some power-ups. Right after that, you'll be on an elevator with eight teleportation modules to do battle with the Robot Masters. Choose the order to your own liking. Save the easier bosses for when you don't have a lot of health. And for the love of God, save your E-Tanks. Let them kill you if you're low on life. You should have a shitload of lives anyway. If you die, who cares? As long as you're putting dents in the Robot Master count and you have all your tanks ready for the Wily fight, you're golden. The only difference in the Robot Masters is you can go with the Scorch Wheel against Burst Man this time. Obviously, you couldn't before. Once you take out all eight robots, it's on to face Dr. Wily. But first, you can grab some more power-ups. Make sure your Junk Shield, Thunderbolt, and Freeze Cracker are as full as possible. And hopefully, you've got all the weapon tanks and energy tanks you can carry. Wily shows up in this big-ass skull machine that stomps around and fires miniature walking skulls at you. Fire the thunderbolt into his face, try to get multiple shots in if you can, and slide under him when he passes by. Keep in mind that there are spikes directly underneath him that'll cause some extra damage. He'll go flying into the air, come back down, and that's when he sends the mini skulls. Use the junk shield to ward them off, and then switch back to the thunderbolt to hit Wily again. Keep this process going until the ship is destroyed. Or at least you think it is. Of course, Wily has a backup plan and takes another form. And for the fourth straight game, Wily uses the disappearing act. He'll come out from behind the wall at any spot and then fire off four projectiles that shift around, pausing momentarily a couple times before going off screen, then sending several balls of electricity across the floor. The projectiles he shoots can be a flame that'll burn you up, ice which will freeze you solid, or an electric charge that'll just stun you momentarily and take out a little bit of damage. If you get frozen while on the ground, the electricity that he sends will still deal damage even though you're frozen solid, so it's quite a double whammy to get hit with ice. You really don't want to get hit with any of them, but it's really fucking hard to avoid. Try to keep as much distance as possible after the shots are fired, and weave your way between them whenever they get close. Then fire off your freeze cracker since it can shoot in multiple directions including diagonal. You may end up using a lot of tanks, which is the reason I suggested you keep them stocked up. This battle's fucking insane. If you manage to gut it out and take him down, the ship will explode and Wily will beg for his life like always, apologizing to Mega Man, saying he'll go quietly, but Mega Man's had enough of his bullshit throughout the years and makes a decision to kill his ass right then and there. But then the building starts collapsing, trapping Wily underneath all the rubble, and Base and Treble show up to take Wily away and promise to return once again. So Mega Man takes off and walks away from the Skull Castle as it blows up behind him. 
Look at that. Mega Man didn't even flinch. He just keeps looking straight ahead as a massive explosion takes place behind him. What a badass. So then the credits roll as we get the roster of Robot Masters and Mega Man returns home to get a picture taken with the rest of the family. So Mega Man 7 is a nice addition to the series. It's not a perfect game, but it does freshen up the franchise a little. Unfortunately, it would be the only 16-bit game in the Mega Man Classic series, as most of the attention was focused on the X series. The next installment would be Mega Man 8 on the Sony PlayStation and Sega Saturn. Strange how the one major console at the time that didn't get it was Nintendo, but that's another story. Mega Man 7 has a few issues here and there, but I think the series is well translated to the Super Nintendo. Even though the 8-bit Mega Mans will always be my favorite, it's nice to see the series evolve. And I'd say that this was a step up from the water-treading Mega Man 6. And that wraps up this edition of Aqua 1's Game Reviews. See you next time.